generous. Pour out mercy by your love. Pour out mercy by your love upon every nation. Pour out your mercy, Lord. We are so fortunate to have such a generous lover and a huge in mercy father. And he says his mercies are new every morning. And so it's a privilege to wake up every morning and just quickly run to the throne of grace where there's a seat of mercy, the mercy seat, and say, Papa. Even just my thoughts or oh, lights have come back. Thank you, Papa. I come before you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord. To thank you for my life, for health, that I'm still here. It's all because of your grace and your mercy. As I wrap up this series on uh, grace, contemplative series of grace on grace, we can't separate grace from mercy just like that. Sometimes it's even used interchangeably. Help me, Holy Spirit. So you put it across only how you want me to put it across. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Without you, none of this would be possible. 
We wouldn't even be able to talk of grace. The Lord had to get to this point to show us how precious we are to Him. May we never forget. May we who look up to Him for this grace and who always cry and come back as a Father have mercy. May we not take these gifts for granted. Because he's not going to give, show mercy on someone who doesn't ask for mercy, who doesn't cry out for mercy. A womb for maybe indication is so sorry. And with a repentant heart, a broken and contrite heart, you will not despise, O oh Lord. Continue to draw your children to you. And renew our minds. Help us, Holy Spirit, so that our lives can be transformed and sin might not be attractive and alluring. It's not because grace abounds that we should take this for granted and just live anyhow. So convict those you have to convict, Holy Spirit. Jesus, you know it all. I thank you for so much. It's in your mighty name that I pray this morning. Amen. My special love and healing ministry tribe, I hope everyone is doing well. Yeah, I'm in black because my father said I should wear black. So um, this is it. Okay, so um, we are wrapping up our contemplative series on grace. And I am very um, grateful that... Um, I am blessed to wrap up the contemplation on grace series this saturday by reflecting on the throne of grace and the mercy seat it's been said by theologians that grace is god giving us what we don't deserve such a gift you don't deserve and he offers it to you while mercy is god not giving us what we deserve we deserve punishment we deserve just cast away but he holds that right. My goodness. If we read Old Testament, we read the Deuteronomy numbers. On, you see the way God used to unleash. Ah. I mean, we'll be finished. <laughs> the app will not even have to be built again. So, yeah. I'm so grateful that all of this is available for us. And so, um, the first um, scripture I would want us to, to look at you know as we are contemplating is psalms 145 from this verse 8 psalm 145 from verse 8 to 14. i like doing notes and putting them all out there because i know that some people um, who are hearing impaired i used to be one of such people and i still think about this category of people and so if they cannot really get me they can read and then go look up these scriptures for themselves and it's also a way of training myself learning and um, the lord taught me yesterday also how to even if you have done it during the week on the eve of it review it listening to your former messages you know and and all of that so i'm very grateful for that psalm 145 verse 8 to 14 the lord is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love the lord is good to all and his mercy is over all that he has made the lord is good to all and his mercy is over all that he has made someone said the lord is not the one who has denied us or rejected us we are the ones we are the ones going away like the prodigal son leave me alone i'm a big girl i'm a big boy okay all your work shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. Are you a saint? They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power. Are you doing that? To make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. 
The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. Are you bowed down? Then come to the Lord. Cry out. Let him see you. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 tells us the following. In whom we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. So it's according to the riches of the Lord's grace that we have um, redemption. And so when we cry out, because it is already established like this, Jesus has already paid that price. So Papa just wants us to cry out. When we cry out, he doesn't need to be there's no prescription for how long you should cry and all of that as we will see in psalm 51 which is like for me the standard or the the the, the prescription from the word of god itself on how we should cry out papa really needs for us because you, you know somebody will just say i'm sorry does that person really mean i am sorry you need to cry you need to what are you sorry about and what will you do now that you are sorry and all of that so we see how David cried out to the Lord and asked the Lord to create in him a clean heart. Because Nathan the prophet went to him, you know, to talk to him about his, his, uh, his adultery and his sin. He went into Bathsheba and did not only go into Bathsheba, take Bathsheba. He had Bathsheba's um, husband sent to the front line so he could be killed. That was terrible. David, can you imagine David? So David cried out, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. It's not even starting by trying to justify, Father, she was, no, no. Have mercy on me, O God, reminding the Lord, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, reminds the Lord again, blot out my transgressions. It's not only that one going into Bathsheba, there have been many already. Even just the lost and all of those things. Sometimes when we become noble, rich, all of that, it gets to our head. So, Nathan talked to him about that, but he just realized there were so many. Even his thoughts, his everything, all of that. Wash me thoroughly. Wash me thoroughly for my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. Now he's focused on that. That is something terrible. I remember the way I cried out myself, completely naked. I knew that my God was seeing me like that. I, I was done. I no 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 no. The sexual perversion had to stop, and so I had to completely surrender. No iota of pride, nothing, because I was so filthy. I felt it, my body was terrible, my spirit, everything was crying out. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Do you know yours? Or oh, you just want him to forgive you, I'm sorry. Against you, you only have I sinned. We have not even sinned against the, our spouse and all of that. No, no, first of all, against God. Because he already told us in his command, do not commit adultery. Do not lie, do not steal. So we are not even hurting the person we have stolen from and all of that. We are already hurting God. We are disobedient. So start there. Before you go and want to restitute or do uh, whatever, you ask sincere apology or, you know, do all. first start with God. Against you, you only have I seen and done what is evil in your sight. So that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. You surrender it all to him. He's going to judge you. Yeah, he's blameless. So you are the one who went astray. Not God though. Okay. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. Well, he has to try to temper, flatter God a little bit. Which is true. We are all brought forth in iniquity. Some theologians, some people, I don't know where they study said uh, David was the child of a concubine. 
that's why he was one was easily sent to the bush to the take care of the sheep and we never heard about his mother yet we can also look at it from the perspective of we all are products of adam adam and that was sin so we have the sin nature in us so um, if you don't have self-control you can easily lost you can easily you know uh, yeah go and have a good time with someone somewhere and then come and cry later and all of those things and in sin did my mother conceive me behold your you, behold you delight in truth in the inward being and you teach me wisdom in the sacred heart purge me with high soap and i shall be clean <coughs> do you know what it means to purge uh, it's not only just true high soap you we use it in Africa, in Enema, I don't know about out there, to pump, you know, the child is constipated or a woman is about to give birth. You know, we do that so that everything can come out that is not clean. So that's also how to purge. Cr create some running stomach kind of situation. So every filthy thing comes out. And so David says, purge me with high soap and I shall be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. The Lord is not going to do these things physically. The Lord is going to do this spiritually, which is even the better one. Because it really is from the inside. So all of that. He, he, change, he changes stories. He, you give it to him. He takes it away. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. So... Baby, that's beg Papa. All of them, Papa, I only beg you. Yes, this particular one, yet all of them. And so in verse 10, he, he, he promises, he makes a promise, he begs God to give it, give him this other chance. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. What are you going to do when the Lord gives you this second chance and everything? Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. I can talk like this, share my testimony. You know, you can do something. Don't just take the forgiveness and then just go and sit down there and make like you had never... No, 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 no. no. Do something. Tell the world about the goodness of the Lord. Deliver me from blood, guilt, time guiltiness oh god oh god of my salvation and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness oh lord open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise for you will not delight in sacrifice or i would give it eh, it doesn't want sacrifice come with your heart you will not be pleased with the burnt offering eh, eh. the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart, oh God, you will not despise. He will not, he did not despise my now. Ah, and I'm not the only one. We are many of us. Do go to Zion in your good pleasure, build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then will you delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings? Then bulls will be offered on your altar. So, David got his papa's complete attention and we know that the lord did not forsake david indeed the lord went on to say david is a man after his own heart because david knew how to come to the lord as many times as possible don't um hold back we move on to first peter chapter 4 verse 10 to 11 this is a book that i am still studying uh, I took three hours to read one chapter. Huh, God, oh, to study one chapter. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10 to 11. As every man had received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So the graces are many as we have been looking at. And so we have to be good stewards. So we don't take it and throw it away and just be living anyhow after all. Yeah, grace abounds, you know. Yeah, his mercy is new every morning. And if that morning doesn't meet you, 
And if you don't run back to him, okay, oh. if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So we have to be good stewards. We don't have to be, um, you know, people who just take the grace of God for granted and all of that. Acts chapter 20 verse 32 is our next scripture. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance amongst all of them which are sanctified. The grace that sanctifies. And now, the grace that builds up, that strengthens. We are commended to such grace. I was studying something yesterday and they were looking and they were saying that um, the author of the book of Acts is still anonymous. Um, and the suggestion that it might have been Luke. Oh, somebody who was close to Paul, but not necessarily the Apostle Paul himself and all of that. Sometimes it's interesting to get this um, historical analysis because I didn't know who wrote the, the book of Acts. Um, but I know who wrote um, the letter to the Corinthians. And so I close with this. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14. The Apostle Paul, he imparts these final greetings on the people in the church of Corinth. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen and amen. I am just inviting us to contemplate. I am not um, teaching anybody anything because I'm still learning myself. But it's a very good thing to um, minister and to share and to sometimes, you know, pass on exalting messages right and and um, invite people to contemplate it's beautiful to behold to think about these things and to know what we have access to in whose name and why When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my very soul will shout hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hey, Lord, hello. There is no repentance in the grave. We only have now that we are alive. And if you want to live a fulfilling life, I try to do it without full commitment to my God. And it did not work out. Because we might see people and think, oh, they have it all put together. They are, they are living their, their best life, their high life and all of that. But we are not inside their spirit, their hearts to know how many people cry on their pillows at night, how many people toast around, how many people cannot even sleep. And so people go to nightclubs every day because they cannot sleep, they cannot even stand in their rooms. The demons are so many, the evil spirit, they distract everything. So the insomnia is at its peak, so better go and sit in a nightclub and be really distracted. But that is even a spot where more and more possession happens. But Jesus invites us to come unto him, all we who are weary and heavy laden. That's what he says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Come unto me, come, just come like that. David was king. David should have known better. And yet David sinned. And David went quickly. In short, I, I, I want to watch the movie, and I saw how... David told remove all those wear garments, wore sack clothes, and put ash on his head. They used to like to put ash on their head. Like, you are nothing. Like, I'm wearing this. He, 
Pastor Victoria Reza was ministering um, at, I think it was maybe in June in America, uh, covered by God with Tif Tiffany, Tiffany, she's a, a prophetess. And she was saying, forget about that beauty and everything. She herself took out, took out her shoes, right? Why should she first wear high heels? I don't know. But, you know, some people can stand in high heels for hours. Me, I can't. So I don't even wear. So, um, but she was saying, forget about the beauty. This is not time to be gentleman. This is not time to be pretty and all of those things. I don't even put the makeup before it starts to sweat and all of No, 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 no. Just forget about it. What, what, beauty what? On the outside? And then what, what will happen? Sometimes people take hours and makeup and use filters and all of those things. When they see me, you know, there's a picture my sister took of us in the village. And I looked at myself. That wasn't me. And I've not posted that picture. So I asked her, why did you use the filter? She said, is the what is morning camera? But she, she, she uses that. Who are we hiding from ourselves, from God? Who? The world. We want them to see also, you know, I'm not talking about people who love it or love your thing. Or, but I'm just saying that your heart, you cannot hide it from God now. So better just go to him and say, Papa. Papa, oh, Papa. That's what he wants. He, see, he was even the, the son of the, the father of the prodigal son was even waiting for him outside. He's not even like sitting in the house on his throne and say, eh, hey, like, let's go and die and all of those things. No. So don't wait. Come today. Right there in your room, your shower, wherever. I say, Father, I surrender it all. You don't need to say the long prayer if you don't know it. It also that's not even all of that talking. Just lie down on the floor, wherever. Say, Papa. I didn't say me, I didn't know me that all. I just said I surrender. That was all that came out of my mouth. And then I started crying so bitterly. I was sick and tired of my life. Even more sick than when I attempted suicide in 2009. I was like, now there's no, 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 you cannot be doing this now. No, 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 no. You are disgusting. I was talking to myself, about, ah. God had to do something like supernatural immediately on that day because I was so sick and tired of my life. I was repelled, I was repugnant, I was everything. So don't wait again, my sister or my brother. The throne is there, come boldly. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks about your sin, come boldly. And whom the Son of God sets free is free indeed. And you will know the truth that you are loved, you are forgiven. You are oh my goodness. Hey, fair voice, your name. All of that. Thank you, Father God. Help us to come and not hold back and not feel so guilty and ashamed and everything because you look beyond all of that. You look beyond. You look past our guilt, our sin, our shame, and you pour your love. You look beyond all of that. Yes, I'm the one that you have shown mercy to. Thank you, Father. I will tell the whole world about it all the time. Continue to have mercy on us. And may we, Father, come to you, Holy Spirit, help us. To know that the Lord is not waiting with a king. He's waiting with open arms. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to understand this. And to really sincerely, with a contrite and broken heart and spirit, come before the Father and receive in your precious name i pray this morning amen spiritual emphasis week with church without words evangelistic association on the power we have received one of those powers is the power to come before the throne oh my goodness please follow the link and go and watch catch up and the lessons are not too long 15 20 minutes but powerful so packed and then a chapter a day proverbs we are studying the book of proverbs such a beautiful book, also full of uh, wisdom nuggets and everything. Connect with us on any of our links. We are starting evangelism in the village with the children on the 5th of August. If you want to support us in any way, we are so grateful and we are open to receive. Thank you. As you are blessed, that's how um, you bless others and others bless you and all of that. And God is glorified. Okay, tomorrow I'll be sharing my notes from the wonderful service, the last Sunday of the month, and then devotions resume next week. Have a serene Saturday. May God bless us all.